Hello, everyone. Dominic Rinaldi from Sun Acquisitions and the M&A Unplugged podcast. And I am being joined today by Mark Serkin. Mark is the CEO of Serkin Advisors, which is a human capital consultancy specializing in people issues, succession planning, and organizational development. Uh, he's also the president of the American Psychological Association's Society for Consulting Psychology. Now that's a tongue twister. And a previous guest on the M&A Unplugged podcast. Mark, welcome back. Thank you, Dominic. It's a pleasure to join you again. You know, Mark, I, we are producing uh, a series of videos uh, all in an effort to help business owners, small and mid-sized business owners, really manage through this COVID crisis. And when I sat down and took an inventory of the people that I wanted to talk to, who I really thought could help business owners, your name was on that list. Uh, you know, who better to help business owners think about how to take care of themselves and their people during this crisis, because that is so important. Um, so thank, thanks for joining. Well, thank you. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, as you can imagine, our society is uh, putting our heads together frantically to try to offer help to business leaders. And I think we, we're, we just set up a website uh, to be able to do that. Uh, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, but we're all working very hard to try to deal with something that's really quite unprecedented for all of us. Yeah. And so, Mark, we, I know you're talking to a lot of business owners. We're talking to a ton of business owners, and they're under a lot of stress. Um, they're trying to save their businesses. They're trying to figure out how to manage through this. You know, some have had to shut down, unfortunately. Um, and they don't only have that pressure but of their own livelihoods, but then they have the pressure of the livelihoods of all of their employees. And, and I know that weighs heavily on so many business owners. So let's spend some time talking about how business owners can take care of themselves uh, in this crisis so that they can, you know, best manage through it. And, you know, from your vantage point uh, and your training and your experience, you, what, what advice would you offer to business owners as they, they tackle this crisis and try to save and stabilize their businesses? Well, I think you put the nail on the head when you mentioned taking care of yourselves because, you know, think about the airplane when, when, the, when the mask drops down. The first thing they say is put your own mask on first so you're, uh, you know, aware and awake and alert so you can help other people. And so I think the first rule of thumb for business owners who tend to be ultra responsible anyway and are always thinking about other people at least that's been my experience, you need to think about yourself first. You need to take care of yourself. You need to do things that will keep your mind sharp and your your yourself focused as well as your emotions open to taking care of people and hearing about their pain and their suffering. You know, sometimes just listening to other people feels so useless, but it's actually a very practical thing to do. It makes people feel heard and understood. Um, I ran across an interesting um, uh, uh, interview with a psychiatrist the other day, and I just I wanted to share that with your um, viewers because I thought it was very helpful. Um, this was by a psychiatrist named um, Sue Varna on MSNBC, and she mentions four things uh, by way of self-care that I would recommend to all business owners. Um, first is some mindfulness practice whether um, it's simply counting your breaths or sitting quietly for 10, 15 minutes. Some people do it for longer, but just quieting yourself down, quieting your mind down, um, listening to your breathing is a very relaxing um, process that has a lot of benefits to it. The second thing she recommends, which I liked, was mastery. Do something that you're good at, something that helps you feel creative. Um, the notion that, you know, this crisis makes all of us feel helpless can be overcome if you're doing something that you like to do and, and you're good at. The third idea she mentioned was movement. There's a lot of studies that show that uh, any kind of movement is better than no movement, even if it's a question of getting up from your chair once an hour and stretching or moving around. It can be something more formal like yoga or tai chi or qigong. 
any of those things are great and they will really help you you a lot uh, mentally and physically. And then last but not least, uh, she mentions meaningful engagement, doing something that's helpful to people, doing something that you feel good about, that you feel you're making a contribution, whether it's just walking around the neighborhood, helping people out, or you know, being on a phone call once a you know once a day to anyone who wants to jump on, all those things will be helpful uh, for people. So my first words of advice to any business leader is take care of yourself first, so there's something left for you to give to others. Yeah, and I'm gonna imagine that's really hard when people are under tremendous stress to you know think outside of themselves and 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 focus on these things that can help them manage this stress right i mean it's just it's got to be very hard when they're fighting to keep their businesses alive struggling and and also dealing with the impact on their employees absolutely um you know your people are going to be pulling at you from lots of different uh directions everything from their financial needs to their emotional needs and I think that, um, you know, look, there's no magic bullet here and no one really expects you to have answers that no one else in the world has. But the one thing you can do, probably better than anyone, is show that you care, show that you're listening. Um, even if you're just as frustrated as the person who's talking to you, the fact that you're there to listen, that you're there to take on a little bit of their pain on top of the pain that you're, you're feeling, um, sends a very powerful message about your leadership, your willingness to be there for people, and your willingness just to go the extra distance to be available for people. I think rationally people don't expect you to have real answers, but if you can just be there and you can be present for people and listen to them and, and hear them, that will go a very long way towards helping them and and also creating a sense of loyalty to both you as an individual leader and the organization as well. Yeah, great advice. Uh, Mark, what have we learned from other crises uh, that we've had, unfortunately, in the recent past? I, I didn't think we'd be talking about 2008 again so soon, but what have we learned from other crises that you know, peop that will give people a lifeline. You know, what, what could they hold on to from the things we've learned that can get them through this? Well, you, you know, that old, that old saw about uh, the Chinese character for crisis is also the uh, same character for opportunity. I have no idea whether that's true or not, but it's still a great story. But I think one of the things I'm realizing is that this crisis is making us deal with things and confront changes that have been creeping up on us for a long time. In fact, um, uh, there was an article uh, today, an op-ed in the Times um, by uh, McChrystal, General McChrystal, where he talks about taking the learnings from 9-11 and applying them here. It's something that, that I would recommend um, to your listeners as well. But I think what we're seeing is that things like video conferencing, um, the notion that the team is, is very important and the way people get along on the team and feel on the team is important to the quality of their contribution. Um, so putting teamwork and the value in teamwork and how people get along um, really does speak to the culture of your organization and improves the culture of your organization in a way that um, is very important. So some of those previous crises, whether it's 2008 or 2001, I think we are in a position to uh, learn from. And frankly, going forward, uh, there's a good chance that some of these changes will become even more embedded. For example, the notion of doing a lot more work uh, via team and via conference calling. I think that's an idea who's been creeping up for a long time now, but it will be here to stay. Um, you know, there was a there was another article uh, recently republished in the Harvard Business Review, where the head of the Harvard Business School talks about which organizations actually do better in a pandemic or any kind of crisis situation than others, and he comes up with about uh, six areas of culture that he suggests 
um, really can make a positive difference. So, for example, organizations should go from being hierarchically focused to more networked. Leadership should go from being more centralized to being more distributed. Um, there should be a loosening of coupling such that, you know, when an organization is tightly coupled, everything is dependent on everything else. A loosely coupled organization gives people a little more autonomy and freedom to do the things that they need to do to get the job done. Um, we're going from a concentrated workforce, think of everybody in one giant factory, to a dispersed workforce where people can work from, from various places. We're going from a world of specially trained specialists to cross-trained generalists. That allows people to take up the slack more easily in areas that haven't traditionally been their own. And then uh, finally, from a policy and procedure-driven organization, we're going to migrate to be um, governed by organizations that are guided by simple yet flexible rules. And so that's a lot in, in a couple of sentences, but I think all of these changes, are gonna, we're going to see more of them and they're gonna be helping us rather than hindering us in the future. Yeah, I think it's a great point. I think, uh, you know, out of every uh, crisis, there's opportunity and there's an opportunity to improve what you've done. And I, I know in the core group of people that, that I network with, we're all talking about how this might fundamentally change the way we do business going forward. And I know for me and my company, uh, we are thankful that we can work remotely but I implemented a, a, a morning video chat uh, where people, it's not mandatory, but if you want to log in and, and, you know, talk to folks and see what's happening and it's a good way to check in with everybody, it, it's a nice way to stay in touch. Uh, we've even been able to celebrate a few uh, positive things here, which, which is great. You know, it keeps momentum and it keeps spirits high and you don't feel so dislocated. Let me ask, um, right. will your association, um, have access and be providing resources potentially to business owners to help them through this crisis? Uh, yes, absolutely. We're actually hard at work at that right now. We're in the process of putting up a, um, a special uh, page on LinkedIn. Uh, I can give you that great uh, page number if you want, page uh, uh, address if you want. Um, so, what I'm seeing here is, sorry, it's such a mouthful. It's uh, HTTPS colon uh, slash slash www.linkedin.com and then forward slash IN and then forward slash, and this is the name of our group. It's SCP COVID-19 Task Force. And that's all one word. I'm going to say it again. Well, you know what? We'll put it in the we'll put it in the notes. We'll put it in the body. Oh, so great! People okay, have a direct great. link. That that's awesome. And I know Thank you. you. Work, uh, I know your organization I'm, is is uh, an umbrella organization of the American Psychological Association. Correct. Correct. And are you working closely uh, with them on some of these resources? I know you're specifically tasked with business and helping business owners, but are they helping as well in that regard? Absolutely. In fact, um, you know, they asked to be part of our initial phone call earlier in the week, and we said, let's get our act together, and then we'll be able to help you. So, you know, in a sense, we're practicing what we're preaching. We're taking care of ourselves as an organization before we can reach out to other organizations. But the APA has done a really great job of putting all the information in one spot. Um, I would recommend people go to their primary page, which is uh, www.apa. Dot org, um, and they have a couple of COVID links there. The one I liked in particular was under uh, practice and social distancing. They have a lot of specific ideas. And then towards the bottom of that article, they also have, um, you know, maybe uh, uh, seven or eight uh, specific links for other information from places like the World Health Organization and uh, and uh, some of the more scientific um, um, organizations, especially, um, you know, last but not least, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, because we know people who um, are dislocated 
psychologically like this virus is doing, people who are isolated, people who already may be prone to depression are at greater risk for suicide. So when you're talking to people and you're asking them if they're all right, ask them if there's anything you can do for them. Um, you know, even just being on the phone with them on a regular basis is something positive that we all can do. Yeah, Mark, this is great information. Again, when we thought about, you know, how can we help uh, owners, there's a lot of effort going into uh, finances and, and lending and, you know, keeping people financially buoyant. Uh, but we also thought that, you know, there's the mental and psychological piece of this where, you know, people could get worn out and tired and, um, and, and need a lifeline there. And so I'm glad there's organizations like yours that have good information to put out so people can get a lifeline in that way. Mark, any, any last thoughts uh, before we wrap up here? No, but I do think that, or I, I want to um, uh, mention as well as make an offer that anyone who hears this, this podcast and does feel the need either from a personal or a um, leadership point of view to get some advice, please go to that website. Um, you can reach our organization through that website and we can have somebody reach out to you and contact you personally if you feel the need for some personal advice. No charge, of course, for any of that at this point in time. We're all just trying to pull together and help each other. Mark, thanks so much. Good visiting with you. And to everybody out there in the community, uh, if you have uh, any other resources that you'd like to get published out through this medium, please contact me directly. Or if you yourself have information that you think would be useful to business owners to help them through this crisis, please reach out. You can reach me at drinaldi at sunacquisitions.com. Hope you all stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thanks, Dominic.